Now let's look at the lens that is thinner in the middle. And I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to shine a paraxial ray into this lens. As you can see that this ray gets bent away from the center. It gets diverged. If I shine another paraxial ray into the lens, it also bends away from the center. The ray gets diverged. These two rays do not go through the focal point. However, their extensions do meet at this point back here. So this point here is the focal point. Because this lens diverges light, it is called a diverging lens. The reason why this lens bends light away from the center is because of refraction. For example, this ray undergoes two refractions. Once when it enters the lens, the other one when it exits the lens. To help us better see the bending of the ray, I drew two normal lines at the interface here and the interface here. When the ray goes from air into glass, the light slows down, therefore the angle gets smaller over here. When the light ray goes from glass to air, it speeds up. So the angle in the air is bigger than the angle over here. That's why this ray bends up that way and then up that way again. A diverging lens does not have to be shaped like these. It can also be like this or that. As long as it is thinner in the middle, it is a diverging lens. Now let's work on a sample problem. Here we have a diverging lens and an object in front of it. And we are going to find the image produced by this lens. I have labeled the focal points on both sides of the lens. First, we're going to use ray tracing to find the image produced by this lens. To use ray tracing, we again need to draw two rays. The first one I'm going to draw is the paraxial ray. So this ray comes in parallel to the principal axis. And again, I'm just going to make the ray bend at the center over here instead of having the ray bend twice as it enters and leaves the lens. Just bend it once at the center of the lens. How does this ray bend? Where should this ray go to? This is a diverging lens, so the ray is not going to get bent towards the center and go to the focal point. It is going to get diverged. It is not going to go through the focal point, but its extension is going to go through the focal point. So we're going to draw the ray so the extension goes to the focal point. The ray would bend that way, so its extension goes to the focal point. The second ray I'm going to draw would go to the center of the lens. So from here to the center of the lens. Where would this ray go? Just like the ray that goes through the center of the converging lens, the diverging lens over here has the two sides almost parallel with each other. That means uh, this ray essentially is going through a rectangular block of uh, glass, which means uh, this ray should come out traveling in the same direction. Of course, because of the thickness of this lens, uh, the ray is going to come out with a little bit of shift. But if the lens is very thin, then this shift can be negligible which means that we can just say this ray is going to travel straight through. So this ray that goes to the center is going to travel straight through. So I just have to make extend this line straight through. These two rays are never going to meet to form a real image. However, this ray here would meet with uh, that ray's extension over there, and that's where our image is. So we would have an upright small image in front of the lens. Because uh, it is formed by the ray extension, this is a virtual image. See, this virtual image is uh, upright. 
and because the lens lets light go through, the virtual image will be at the same side as the object. So the image is in front of the lens, the same side, on the same side as the object. Now let's compare this ray tracing diagram to the ray tracing diagram we did in the lesson 14, the problem about the passenger side rear view mirror. In both cases, I drew the object three times the focal length away. One, two, three. One, two, three. And uh, both the convex mirror and the diverging lens, they diverge light. The only difference here is that the mirror reflects light. So the reflected rays are these two over here. But the lens lets light go through, so the light coming out is, are these two which means that if I flip these two rays over, make these rays reflected rays, this diagram will look exactly like this. Or I can say if I fold these two rays over here over, it will be like the lens because the lens lets light go through while the mirror reflects the rays. So in both cases, we get the same virtual image, same size, same distance away from the lens or the mirror. It's just that the virtual image produced by a lens is in front of the lens. The virtual image produced by a mirror is behind the mirror. So a diverging lens is almost exactly like a convex mirror. So a diverging lens would also have a negative focal length. Let's say the focal length of this particular Diverging lens is negative 9 meters. And the object is placed uh, 27 meters away from the lens. For example, this can be you looking through a diverging lens at a tree that's 27 meters away. And let's find the location of the image and the magnification of the image. So we can use the same equation as the mirror equation. So now we can just say this is the mirror and lens equation. So it's mirror lens equation, 1 over the O plus 1 over the I equals to 1 over F. And this will be 1 over 27 plus 1 over the I equals to 1 over F, which is 1 over negative 9, because the diverging lens does not co converge light. It diverges light instead and we'll be able to find the di to be negative 6.75 meters, which means that this image is formed in front of the lens 6.75 meters away. This negative sign tells us that the image is uh, virtual, and therefore it must be upright and uh, in front of the lens. And for the magnification, it is uh, the HI over HO, and it is also the negative DI over DO. So it is negative, DI is uh, negative 6.75, DO is uh, 27. So the magnification is uh, positive 0.25. And the positive means uh, the image is uh, upright which is consistent with what we have here, of course. And uh, the image is only one-fourth the size of the object. So the image of that tree would be one-fourth as tall as the real tree. So I can also ask you, let's say, if the tree is uh, four meters high, what is, how tall is the image? So we can say this is uh, HI over HO. And we're looking for the HI. HO is 4 meters, therefore HI must be 1 meter. So the image is only 1 meter tall. Because I used all the same numbers as this rear view mirror problem in lesson 14, so of course my answers are all the same. The only difference is that this image is behind the mirror and the, the image here is in front of the lens. Here I have a diverging lens. As you can see, the diverging lens gives us smaller upright images. 
just like this convex mirror over here, it also gives us smaller upright images. For comparison, I placed a plane mirror over here. A plane mirror gives normal size images with a magnification of 1. As you can see, the image by a convex mirror is smaller.